At a recent Yale conference, 42% of CEOs surveyed, this includes the CEOs of Coca-Cola, Walmart, and more, said that they believe that AI could end humanity within five to 10 years. Is this just overblown media hype doomerism, or is there something more going on? Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less. We kick off today with a story that has been blowing up all over Twitter and the media because it is such a sensational headline. Now, of course, the question is, is it just a headline? Is it just sensationalism? Or is there something more here? This week, Yale professor Jeffrey Sonnenfeld held a virtual event called the Chief Executive Leadership Institute. As part of that, he surveyed 119 CEOs that include companies such as Walmart, Coca-Cola, Xerox, Zoom, and more on what their thoughts around AI were. The big banner headline was that 34% of those CEOs said that AI could potentially destroy humanity in 10 years, and 8% said it could happen in 5 years. Overall, that means that 42% believe there is a chance of AI destroying humanity within just a decade. Now, 58% said that that could never happen and they are not worried, but 42% is an enormous number. Said Professor Sonnenfield, it's pretty dark and alarming. Now, obviously on this show, alongside the rise of all these new technologies, we've also been profiling the rise in the conversation around AI safety and AI risk. There is no doubt that it has taken an outsized place in the media. And in fact, I believe that's why you're seeing a counter response such as Mark Andreessen's Why AI Will Save the World piece, because there are many who feel like the rhetoric has just gotten out ahead of itself. Now, interestingly, Sonnenfeld has a framework for understanding five distinct camps within AI, and I think it's pretty useful. The first group he describes include curious creators who are naive believers who argue that everything you can do, you should do. Sonnenfeld compared them to Robert Oppenheimer before the bomb. A second category are euphoric true believers who only see good in AI. A third category are the commercial profiteers who are seeking to cash out and cash in on this new tech. Sonnenfeld says they don't know what they're doing, but they're racing into it. And then there are two categories of safety people. One, alarmist activists, and two, global governance advocates. The net point, and this I agree with more than anything else that has been said, is as Sonnenfeld puts it, these five groups are all talking past each other with righteous indignation. Now, when it comes to the Twitter sphere, I would characterize the response to this article in this survey as skepticism, to say the least. Eurasia Group President Ian Bremmer writes, Percentage of CEOs surveyed at Yale CEO Summit that say AI could destroy humanity in 5 to 10 years, 42%. Percentage of CEOs surveyed at Yale CEO Summit that understand AI, 58%, max. Box's Aaron Levy writes, this is really getting ridiculous. And OpenAI's developer relations Logan writes, 42% of CEOs are out of touch. Ben Collins writes, this says more about the gullibility and or scam artistry of CEOs than the capabilities of the actual technology. Speaking of capabilities of the actual technology and CEOs interested in AI, it turns out that Meta is potentially shifting some of its strategy when it comes to AI. Their Llama model has been at the center of the open source Cambrian explosion. It was released earlier this year and open source for non-commercial and research purposes. Now, according to the information, Meta is planning a commercial release to allow people to actually use this open source technology for commercial purposes. This would, of course, be a very different strategy than the approaches taken by competitors like OpenAI and Google. Other companies outside those building foundational models are also looking for ways to incorporate AI into their systems. Mercedes-Benz made headlines yesterday when they announced that they were testing ChatGPT in cars to answer, quote, complex questions while people are driving. Basically, they're looking at ChatGPT as a voice assistant in cars. So if people want to understand things like how many miles to their destination, they can ask that in natural language. And while I've seen a lot of people being very skeptical of this or saying for some reason or why are they doing this, I got to say it actually strikes me as kind of an obvious use case. Think to how many times you've used the voice assistant in your car. The answer, if your car has one, is probably about zero times because they're just not good. But what if it was of the quality of ChatGPT? What if it was programmed directly into the display? What if you could actually use it to interface with your car in a more meaningful way? I don't think it's insane to think that might be a user experience that's common in the future. From June 16th on, that's today, people who have Benzes with the MBUX infotainment system, which represents around 900,000 vehicles in the U.S., can use the voice command, Hey Mercedes, I want to join the beta program, and start trying it out. Now, going back to the theme of AI safety, outside of just the extinction risk conversation, there are other people who are thinking more practically about short-term concerns. Some of those arise from specific categories of AI, such as voice cloning. Eleven Labs is one of the companies at the very forefront of voice cloning, and they've just announced something that they're calling AI Speech Classifier. 
The basic idea, quite simply, is to allow people to upload any audio sample from which Eleven Labs can identify if its technology was used to generate any part of that audio. In their announcement post, they write, Generative AI has simplified the creation of images, text, and audio clips to the extent that they are often indistinguishable from human-made content. At Eleven Labs, we believe in the transformative potential of these technologies and their ability to unlock new frontiers of creativity and accessibility. At the same time, we also recognize that to fully harness the benefits of these technologies, we must prioritize the establishment of robust infrastructures that ensure their safe and responsible use. When it comes to the AI speech classifier tool, they write that audio generated by their system has very specific and detectable characteristics. So if people upload content that has been unedited, speech classifier can identify whether it was created with 11 labs with greater than 99% accuracy. However, if it underwent transformations such as reverb transformations, the classifier has over 90% accuracy. And then obviously the more the content has been post-processed, the harder it is for the model to understand it. Now, this is a great step, no doubt, but the challenge is, of course, that no one company has a monopoly on AI speech or voice mimicking. Remember, I used Play.ht for my long read Sunday last week. Still, it's great to see companies taking these types of proactive steps, as voluntary private action is going to be a key part of any safe AI future. Last, before we wrap for today, one really cool tool. Before Sunset is an AI task planner. Basically, it's a tool that asks you a set of simple natural language questions. What are you going to work on? How long will it take? And how much time is available for that to do? And creates an AI-generated plan for one's day. Now, I don't know if this will actually work in practice, but what I do know is that it's been number one on Product Hunt for the last couple of days with almost 1,300 upvotes. So if you are someone who struggles with planning out your day, maybe before sunset is worth checking out. Anyways, guys, that is it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying these, please like, subscribe, and share, and I will be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.